Lock the gate. Dump some feed. And the next part's what upsets me. Or sorry, it's only October 29th and I can't believe what I'm about to do. I'll show you guys in just a second. Yep, you guessed it. It's that time already. Our short time of grazing, which I think we started about 2017. October 29th is definitely the worst we've ever done as far as having to start feeding hay. And I know a lot of it is, yeah, we did have the absolute worst drought ever on record for our area. Still hurts a lot to be rolling out hay already. So I'm gonna get these strings cut off. And like you saw, I put a little bit of feed out for the cows and I'm putting this hay. There's something magical about hay to cows. I don't know why, but cows love hay, especially the first bale of the year like this. So I'm curious, they know that feed is in there and they see they got this bale of hay. I wanna see which one they're gonna go for first, just to satisfy my own curiosity. But I'm gonna get all these strings off of it so we don't have any trouble. which I know a lot of guys leave the string. It helps them like slow down eating a bale of hay. They can't uh, bust it open as easy. But the one issue I have seen with the string is that it'll get tangled around the legs of a young calf. And when you get it uh, tangled around their legs, it could uh, cut off circulation. We didn't actually have a huge problem with it, but I have had little calves get tangled in it and uh, have some near incidents. So. We just kind of make it a habit now. We always uh, take the strings out of the hay just for uh, the health and safety of our animals. And I know there's probably some little pieces you miss, I miss occasionally, but it'll get buried. It'll rot pretty quick. All right, I think we got all the strings. Might actually leave this one on the tractor. For a minute we'll turn the cows in and see what they decide to do Looks like we have a little bit of a split audience. It took them a minute to figure out there was feed in there. But I'd say the majority of them are in there eating the feed. And then we got a few of them over here eating some hay still. But I think uh, they're all working their way over there. That's pretty funny. So I got a couple holdouts. So anyway, I decided I was gonna lock the cows in this small little catch pen today because uh, my mom's having her October 
doesn't really celebrate Halloween, but it's kind of their October fall fun day or whatever she calls it. So she wanted to use some of the pastures to hide some goodies around. So I told her I'd lock up all the cows in a small area and uh, give them their first bale of hay for the, for the winter. And I struggle to say winter because it's only October 29th. But uh, man, it's been a tough, dry year. It's, it's definitely been our toughest year of grazing uh, since we've been farming. And fortunately, we, we do still have some grass. I mean, it's not all dead, but it's just not growing. So it's made it really tough. If we could just get a little bit more rain, I think we could uh, we could get another flush of growth. We have not cooled off at all. I know we got a little cool front coming this week, but uh, if I get a decent rain, we would definitely get us a flush of growth and we'd be in pretty good shape. Uh, it probably helped me feed less hay. I'm not gonna say I'm gonna stop because I know our grass is probably pretty poor quality right now. But uh, yeah, it's kind of depressing to feed hay this early. I think I've got enough hay to make it till, uh, till March. So if I get some ryegrass planter or some clover pops up on its own in our pastures, I think we'll be in really good shape. But if not, we're gonna be feeding hay. And if it gets really bad, we'll supplement with a little bit of feed. This is just some of the leftover feed I had from feeding those steers out. I've been giving them a little bit here and there when I got to move them around just like this and uh, it works perfect. So they don't get this every day, but they get it when I need to move them, which today was one of those days. So, but yeah, I think uh, I'm gonna work on our strategy for getting through the winter and trying to get some, uh, some ryegrass planted. I may do things a little bit different this year than we've done in the past where I keep them on their same rotation. I might try, uh, a much smaller intensive rotation as I plant and see uh, see if we could do something a little bit different this winter and maybe get a different result. I'm not positive how it's going to work out, but I know I can't do anything until we start getting some rain. And all the cows have calves on them right now. The grass is waning. So I know uh, the conditions going to start dropping on these cows if we don't start doing something. So our hay is not uh, the best quality in the world because we were in a drought for it. But uh, I guess it is what it is. We're gonna just have to deal with it. And I guess let me get this tractor out here before they uh, realize that the gate is wide open. Looks like the feed is running out and uh, they're gonna come smash this bale of hay, watch. I'm gonna give them a couple of hours. So it's uh, about 8.30 in the morning. I'm gonna come back in a couple of hours and see how much of this hay bale they've eaten. Usually. The first bale of hay, they really go after it like with a vengeance. It's kind of funny. Let's get this old pump cranked up and pumping while we wait for uh, the cows to work on that bale of hay. But man, we are making some real progress, at least getting the pond down. So I've started renovating the pond a little bit. See, it's still a little bit of water in here. But you can see all the areas, we had too much shallow area. So I've been working on re-sloping the banks, uh, cutting down the amount of shallow area. I want some shallow area for the fish to spawn that you can see is just too much. We were getting overtaken with algae every year. So I'm gonna drop down a lot of these places that are exposed like this. I'm gonna cut down about a foot of dirt. So they're about a foot deeper when the pond is flooded and hopefully uh, we don't grow as much algae. If we do, I guess we'll have to pump it down again next summer and work on it a little bit more. And have you ever wondered what digs these giant holes in your pasture? I mean, look at this thing. This is no joke. You talking about an ankle breaker? That's like, knee deep and it was not there just a couple of days ago see it also dug a little bit right here let me show you what it is look at that rotten sucker digging up my field I'm noticing these things digging up our pasture oh it's not very scared of me this is a strange creature why would he let me get five feet away from it? These things are so destructive around here. They dig everything up, they make a big old mess. They're just nasty. Weird. Now what are the odds of this? I had the cows locked up today for the little family fun day for my mom. And it just so happened to be that during the day today, this old tree fell 
on the fence and knock the barbed wire down. And it looks like all of them are intact, but maybe the top bar looks like it busted. So I'm gonna show you real quick before we let the cows out, I'm gonna show you uh, the splice knot I use on my barbed wire. All right, so since this wire busted, I've got to add a section in. So you see I got my original wire right here, and I got a little section that I'm gonna splice in. I'm gonna show you what I use to make the splice. But what I do is I cut it like right past a barb. So you see I got the longest possible piece without a barb. And then all I'm gonna do is untwist it on that section. And then I'm gonna spread it. Just like that, not too far, not 100% open, but somewhere just about like that. The piece I'm gonna splice it to, I've got the same. So where I want to make my splice, I've got two pieces in Y's or V's, whatever you want to call it like that. Now I'm going to take these two pieces and I'm going to push them together just like that. And I'm going to kind of hold one of them. I'm going to take the other and I'm going to start spinning it around the main line. And then I can get them to line up just perfect. So with this high tensile wire, you really only get one chance to bend this stuff. Once you bend it up once, it'll start breaking if you try to bend it back and do it. So you need to get it right all in the first go. It'd be better if I had some gloves. But anyway, you keep spinning it. Let me see if you can see it. You see how I'm lining up the twist just like that? Keep going. And this creates a lot of tension without putting too much stress on any one section. So I end up one side just like that. Of course, this stuff's getting all over me. Then I kind of spin the wire because I got, like everybody, I've got one dominant hand. But then I bend the wire and I do the exact same thing on the other end. I spin it just like this. This is a crazy piece, of course. Try not to get slapped in the face of this stuff. But yeah, continue to spin this one around the main wire on the other side. Not cross it up or anything, keep it nice and even. And then what will happen is this is basically like full strength of the wire. Or if you look, both ends go around just like that. That to me, this makes the strongest splice where you could pull the full force on this wire. And this is not going to be the first place it breaks more than likely it's going to break somewhere else maybe here but if you got any weakness in the line it's going to break there before it breaks here and that is how i make the splice so i'm gonna pull this tight real quick and then uh i can go let the cows in Okay, so we got all that taken care of. Everybody's done playing on the farm. I can let the cows out and I'm gonna show you what uh, what it looks like, what my hail of bay looks like after uh, the better part of a day of them being locked in here. They've certainly uh, unraveled all of it. Made a big mess. I don't know how much they've eaten, probably more than half. You can see there's all this hay on the ground. What are y'all doing? Hi, Miss Daisy. Where's your baby at? Yeah, you get a good look at the hay. Now, I don't have a feeder. I didn't unroll this. So you can see if they sleep in it tonight, they're probably just going to soil it up. What you can do is you can come back around in any spot you see where they got poop or pee on it or anything. You just take a pitchfork, throw it out, pile the good hay back up, and they can eat on it several days without much trouble. So. I'll leave this pen open, the gate open, so they come back in here tomorrow and hopefully clean some of this up. Looks like they uh, certainly enjoyed it. And here's a little dollop. It's definitely growing, but she is by far the smallest calf we have ever grown here. These are a couple of the later calves, and you can see her size compared to them. She's not even half their size. I'll bet you she's still only, 
She's a smaller dog, Jolie, so she probably can't be more than 40 or 50 pounds max. But uh, she looks healthy. She's frisky. She runs around, hangs out with the herd, but she is tiny. So I don't know what we're going to do with her when we get her uh, weaned. I guess we're going to have to uh, either sell her or keep her separate from the bull. I know she's going to be too small of a cow to breed to, uh, to our bull. So i got to figure out what exactly I'm going to do with her. Poor little dollop. I think this guy right here will make too big of a calf where I'd be scared to uh, let her calve. But yeah, here's the bull. He's in his working clothes right now. He's been with the cows for quite a while. Grass is getting a little thin on him. But uh, overall, I think the herd's doing pretty good. Easy now. He is a very gentle bull. I trust him more than any other bull I've ever had. I know I shouldn't, but uh, he doesn't scare me at all. Yeah, it's kind of funny. They've been locked in this little bitty area all day. Open the gate, and they're just gonna continue to hang out in here. I guess they say that's where the goods are. That's where I'm gonna hang out. So anyway, we didn't even make it to November this year. Looks like our grazing season is over for the most part. Uh, I'll put them through another rotation and maybe try to plant some grass as we do it. Let them tramp the seeds in for me. But uh, it was a long, hot, dry summer. I hate to say it, but I'm kind of glad it's coming to an end. Looks like we got some cold weather in the forecast this week. And uh, maybe we'll get a little rain, but they're not calling for more than a... It's, it's like a tenth of an inch is all they're calling for with the front coming through. So I don't know. I'm thinking we're not going to get anything. So I've pretty much given up on the hope of getting any more grazing. I think we just got to make do with the hay. Hopefully we get enough moisture in the ground that we can start planting some rye. And we'll be off to the races. We'll be waiting for spring. Anyway, catch you guys later. Bye.